Welcome back to And Here's Modi. Wow, do we have a special guest here in the audience? Who? What? Who? What? what? What's the name? Elon Levy. Elon Levy. Elon, not Elon. Elon Levy. The, I'm just saying it, the spokesman of the state of Israel. Whether it's official or not, I think it is. No? It's official. Those of you who don't know, I mean, there's a million other things to his introduction besides going to Oxford and Cambridge, and he was a news anchor, and he lived in London and then lived to Israel, but the best thing is he's the spokesman of Israel, and so whenever Israel needs to be represented, he's speaking. And I cannot tell you, those of you who are younger, and I know you just did a whole thing for Gen Z, what a breath of fresh air you are. <laughs> Those of you who don't know, whenever Israel's in the news, they always find someone who should never be speaking <laughs> English. Some disaster zone who start, first of all, whose tie is off. Is my tie right? Is that gut, right? Whose we check gut is we out and he starts to speak I'll usually. This is the, because of the reaction of the issue or the issue is we are looking at something that is not for the regular. And you think to yourself, why is this person representing Israel? You know, Modi, I've done speaking. so many interviews and I don't think I've seen any interviewer be as rude about Israelis as you are right now. Not Israelis. <laughs> Not Israelis. P this guy that's doing this speaking is probably an amazing politician and great, but should not be representing Israel. Someone who speaks English well should be representing, and that's you. A breath of fresh air you are. I, I'm, I'm, is that not what, it, have you been called that before or no? That's uh, very kind of you. We're definitely trying to shake things up and be as creative and versatile as possible to get Israel's message out in this world. It's 100% Mashiach energy to see you on on Instagram, on social media, on, on, on television, representing Israel, speaking with like, like a, you know, you have a debating background. Yes. So you you know when to not go, not to be excited, not to be, um, um, a, a, you're a statesman. I will say it, you are a, definitely a statesman. No? That's very kind. I mean, we are trying to be as creative and shake things up as much as possible and really redefine what it means to be a spokesman and to right. do political messaging. So, you know, in addition to all the interviews I'm doing, we have all the content we're producing, especially for social media, toying the line between being government spokesman and content Stop. creator you're, you're, you're and the podcast your, as well. But you're in your autopilot mode right now. <laughs> drop it. So you're, you need to get me out no, of autopilot you're out of mode. No, this is Crack not a couple the of funnies, interesting throw me off, where uh, we throw me are guard. looking for the... How horrible have... Whenever you saw Israel, whenever there's a war or some conflict, you just they bring someone that can't speak English on. It's, it's mind-boggling, no? I think that one of the things that has happened post-October 7th is that we have seen what we thought were Israelis or what the world perceived at is as Israelis or as they called us white colonizers. No. That that's not actually what it means to be an Israeli. Right. And I think that one of the things that Elon is showing the world is that that character that really is kind right. of a caricature. The caricature. Um, is not accurate. Amazing. Um, well said, Periel. That character is not, it's right, it's right. You know, I will say, in my eyes, a predecessor of that was Asav Zamir. Mm -hmm. If you, uh, a friend of mine, he was the Israeli Council General, whatever the title is. Council General. Yeah, basically going to restaurants in, it's called, it should be called going to restaurants in New York City General. <laughs> That's what it should be called. And Asav Zamir. Nice work if you can get it. Asav Zamir killed it. He spoke English with the grammar of an American right. or, or someone of an English speaker. And he was just like, he had this gig in New York. His wife was filming in Israel, coming in and out. But he was like so relatable. It wasn't, yeah. Israel is surrounded by its enemy and we are in a situation, oh my God. And it was another like a breath of fresh air. And you just, I mean, wow, wow. It's just uh, an honor to be sitting here with you representing... It, you know, it's just you see Israel being represented by in a in a comical way. I feel like I'm doing that job. You're doing it in a very comical way, absolutely. You know, in to show the anger of 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 Jews, Michael Rappaport yes. is showing the 
anger we and have I inside of us. And I think that's critical to, first of all, show anger. It's okay to be angry sometimes yeah. if you channel that into something productive and helpful and don't let that rage control you. But at the same time, humor as well. We know as the Jewish people that history gives you two options. You either laugh or cry, so you make an effort to laugh because otherwise you're going to be in floods of tears and humor plays such a critical role as, you know, in shining a light on what is so absurd about the situation and also picking up morale for a people who are still still licking their wounds from October yeah, 7th and absolutely. with the hostages still trapped there need to get through the day. Yeah. Uh, um, and you, you know, it's it just, I'm just so happy that there's a representation of, of, of Israel. You know, there's another representation of Israel. Um, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what his title was, but he was running the Instagram or TikTok of the Israeli IDF. The, the, uh, his name is... Uh, Yohanan Twina. Twina? I don't know, I'm not familiar. He is this, um, he somehow is a little bit related to me, but he was running the TikTok of the IDF and he is a flaming homosexual. Flaming. <laughs> And it was the funniest TikTok I had ever seen in the world. <laughs> and he's like, hello, we got him It was so brilliant. That's amazing. I love it. And I think that's what really riles up the pro Hamas crowd that these people are whipping our asses right so now. So they 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 said that when the war began, they that the Hamas was sending around his his um his tweets. Oh, they his, think the joke is on us. They don't realize the joke is on them. them. The yeah. joke is on them. Yeah, yeah. So you got to this position. Obviously, it's not like overnight. I hate when they hear the word overnight success. Like someone says, how did you all of a sudden become a big comedian? It's I've been 30 years doing comedy. <laughs> You're and saying you did 30 years of hard work before people noticed. Yeah, but you you have a background. Wow, you you Oxford and Cambridge. Yeah. That's uh, a brand a name small, school. Uh, small community colleges in England. Wow, that's so impressive. And the accent obviously was great. But, but before that, you, you were um, a news anchor or? Yes, I was, a, I was a news anchor on television in Israel, at the public broadcaster and I-24 News as well. And then I spent two years working with President Herzog, our wonderful right. president is his foreign media spokesman. So when the war broke out on October 7th, everyone scrambled to do whatever they could. Some people just decided to distribute food or cook or make things for displaced families and soldiers. And I said, I know how to do interviews. So I set up um, a little mini studio at home. I took a pile of books, put them on the living room table, took the bottle of protein powder, I haven't been to the gym since this war started, put a nice banker's lamp on top of it, took a picture, tweeted it saying, I'm a former advisor to the president, I'll do interviews. And I started doing interviews in my living room. And wow. then within a week, found myself getting called to the Kiriya, the defense compound in Tel Aviv, putting on a suit and tie and overnight, being interviewed as an Israeli government spokesman. It was a very surprising twist a week after the war started. It's, it's basically what happened to me during COVID. Yeah. During COVID, we're stuck at home. My husband and I start doing the characters, Nir, Natfar, and Yoeli. And we did a whole, you know, we ra I ran for president as Yoeli. <laughs> as a guy. In the living room, we created a studio. And, it, and I was doing Zoom shows, just like the war was your COVID. The war was your call to action, you know. Um, and it's it's just been, it, it's it's. But you were perfect for it. You were poised for it, and we needed it. You no? were in you were in Israel. Yes, I was in Israel on October seventh. The sirens started at seven thirty in the morning. Where else was I? Obviously in bed because it was a Saturday morning. Simchat Torah. Yeah. Every reason to think that you'd be able to sleep in, and suddenly the sirens go off. And in Israel, if you're lucky and live in a building built in the last thirty years, you have your own rocket shelter at home. Every apartment has a fortified concrete room. But if you're in an older building, then if you're lucky, there's a rocket shelter on the ground floor or the basement. And if you're not, you wait in the stairwell. So I jump out of bed, run downstairs with all the neighbors, all half naked carrying their kids. They look at me asking, is it from the north? Is it from the south? As if, because I used to work for the president, I'm supposed to know. Right. And, and yeah, just ripped out of bed in the morning into the chaos and, and horror of what was unfolding on TV. Yeah, we were in bed. It was at 6.30, it was in Tel Aviv. I was in Yafo and the alarm went off and uh, Leo and I were in bed. And I mean, it's the first time I'd ever been in Israel during uh, the, those sirens. You've never heard the sirens before? I never heard the sirens What was that before. like for you the first time to so hear the sirens? So I was like, this is not good, but it's, I guess the missiles will catch them, the Pi uh, Patriot missiles, I oh. said, and we were, we'd been out the night before, Friday night, we were out, we were laughing and joking till two in the morning and so 
our sleeping pills were just about to hit. <laughs> so I said, I said, I think you can go in the hallway to Leo, but I'm going to stay right here and wait this out. And then at 10.30 when we got up to go to breakfast, we began to, it all came to, to, together. Yeah, it, it slowly people started to realize we've been through so many of these rounds of conflict with Hamas and you assume, okay, it'll be another round of conflict, rocket sirens for a week, and then things will get back to normal right. and quickly realized as we saw the massacre unfolding in the Kibbutzim and the Nova Festival, news didn't start coming in until the afternoon that this was yeah. a completely different story. This was not another round of conflict. We had just been invaded. Yes. Invaded by Hamas, by air, land, and sea. And we were now at war, something we hadn't seen in a long time. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we, same, we, we didn't know what was happening till later on in the afternoon. We were driving. I've told the story on, on the podcast before that we, we, had, we had a driver in Israel who always spoke to us in English. And while we were with, um, because he wanted Leo to understand what's happening and whatever we were talking about. Um, and he was beginning to talk. You haven't got his Hebrew, Hebrew up to scratch yet? No, but he... Well, are you working on it? He speaks Yiddish better than he speaks Hebrew. Okay, but you need to work on the Hebrew as well. It's very yeah, important. Yeah, um, so we... And he was telling us, you know, that he was talking to people in the in the kibbutzim that were in the bomb shelters, hearing the the banging of Hamas on the, on the, out, on the outdoor. So, I, I mean, people who follow you, go and they can see your interviews and it's uh i, I want to ask you outside kind of like what you've been asking before where, where what's happening with the government of israel what's what happening do you mean? I, we understand what's happening in israel where there's a war there's a war and israel is in my opinion i think it's very hard for the world to see jews as heroes as as uh warriors it's not. I think it was Minister Ron Dermer who said very early on in the war, after the initial sympathy began to fade, that it's easy to side with the Jews when they're victims. It's harder to side with them when they become victors. Right. That's a very well said. Yes. You know, he's, he, um, he talks good. I know. <laughs> he talks good. Listen, we're five months into the war. The sound bites are polished. Already. Yeah, but don't do sound bites. No, no, no. If I can so give you an advice, don't make it. Even if I tell the same joke over and over, it sounds like I just came up with it. So I'll try to make the, the, the sound, sound bites. Sound like they're don't. Fresh. Yeah, it's not. Sound bites are. It's. Uh, I don't like sound bites. It's. But but that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, it, it's uh, the world can't see Jews as victims. They need to see Jews as the victims, like Schindler's List. Mm -hmm. Who's the who's the hero? Oscar Schindler, you know. Um, I, I, I I I'm not a big Curb Your Enthusiasm fan, but I watch it when it's for some reason whenever I'm jogging in the gym, it's on the screen. Mm -hmm. I just look at it, and the world is okay seeing Larry David as the representative of Jews, you know. But because he's insufferable. Even if you love him, you right, but, recognize that he is insufferable. Right. Built in his bag. I mean, it's funny for me to think that these are these are the main Jewish icons because Israel they is are. a country that is just producing everyday heroes. I was talking about Your country. this now. Yeah, Israel. Israel. I was talking about this just now when I went to speak with Jewish students in uh, Atlanta for the Hillel conference. I made yeah, a speech about it. what it means to make Gen Z Gen Zionist. And I said, kids your age didn't wait for orders to run back into the fire at the Nova Festival and save people mm. and to talk about their trauma as a way of processing it and to set up civil society initiatives to support displaced families. They are taking responsibility and they are proving themselves to be greater than anyone can imagine. I really think the like the incredible resilience of Israeli society, the way they came together after this war, the way people are taking responsibility and acting. And, you know, we talk about all the reservists, all yes. the reservists who are in this war. And sometimes I get the impression from people who are interviewing me that they think somehow we want this war, that we're enjoying it, that we want this right. to go on. When you have 350,000 people in reserves, Forget 700,000 parents who aren't sleeping. These yeah. have been ripped away from their wives, husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends, children from their jobs. They're not working. They don't want to be there. They woke up on October 7th with plans for the next vacation or yep. the next startup they're doing and have now found themselves, okay, you take a gun, helmet, go into war in Gaza. They don't want to do this. They want to go home, but they realize that they can't go home 
until we have dismantled Hamas and brought back the hostages, because otherwise it's going to happen again, again and, and again. again as Hamas Absolutely. is telling us to do. Like, we do not have the luxury to retreat somewhere safe and say, oh, okay, if it explodes, it'll explode in someone else's face. If right. we do not bring back the hostages and destroy Hamas, it will explode in our faces. And I mean literally explode. That's how things explode in your face in the Middle East, literally. Yeah. They don't uh, care or they don't want to believe it or it's like, I don't know what is so difficult for people people who to understand when Hamas has said that over and over yeah, and over again. Yeah, but I'm talking again. about, the, so, so, the, so the, the amazing part about you is yes, at least to the Jews you are reaching and your, your reach is within the Jewish and, and God willing, it pops out a little bit into the non-Jewish world. I should hope it's popping out. I, I mean, you I've should done, hope, but, but ho I've, it's... I've done about 300 interviews since this war began, not for Jewish media, for the top international networks as well, and I really hope it's cutting through. That's what's important. They need to see you. I'm just saying, for the Jews, the, for the Jews, we understand there could be Jewish heroes. We know, everybody knows somebody that's somehow in the war, fighting with a gun and picking a picture and all that, but... Um, you know, the the outside world needs to see the Jews are heroes as well. Yeah, it, it just, the way the Jews have come together is unbelievable. I don't know if you know, like what's happening in America, their missions, all the American the solidarity the, missions. I don't know if you call it. They're called missions. Every yenta in Long Island. I'm going on a mission. I know. I've had lunch with most of them, and, <laughs> and, they, and they all take me to the same restaurant. And they say these missions. They take you to the same restaurant. Yes. They say we're going on a mission. A mission. You could think they're flying F-16s over targets. Uh -huh. Well, you know what? When they are flying, even if it's a Dreamliner, but there are rockets firing overhead. I think that I'm not courage. I'm I not taking it away, courage. but they're saying they're going on missions, like they're flying. F-16s over targets. Then they sit there and talking, where's your mission? We're at the King David. Where's yours? <laughs> We're at the Citadel. We're going to be barbecuing with the soldiers in the front line. We're barbecuing in the tunnels. I'm actually <laughs> going to make my daughter's bat mitzvah in the tunnel. It's become such a thing. That's they were telling us. Venue. They were telling me that they, 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 the soldiers, as they were going, they were handing them uh, $20 bills. I was like, they're going into Gaza, not into a casino. You want to hear an amazing <laughs> story? <laughs> You want to hear an amazing story? I was on the train back from uh, Jerusalem uh, meeting another one of these missions and a woman walked over to me and she said, introduce herself. She was from New Jersey and she was very moved. Thank you for all the work you do. Thank you. And she explained that she'd flown into Israel with a suitcase full of gold jewelry and diamonds. <laughs> I told her she was lucky not to have been stopped at customs. She'd done a hand around to all her friends, asking them for their jewelry. She was now donate, give, handing them out to the wives in displaced families Aww. and military wives whose husbands were in reserves. And that's that's where I, I got this watch then, from. Then, <laughs> that's where I got this watch from. And then, and, then she, and then she went, sat down, and came back to me a few minutes later and said, here's $200. I want you to give it to someone who needs it. And immediately I knew one chap who was a survivor of the Nova Festival and has been zipping around the country doing Hasbara, talking about what happened with zero support, paying for the gas for his car from his own pocket. Yeah. I called him that afternoon. I said, here's $200 from this lovely lady from New Jersey. So like you belittle it, but it means I a huge I did not say amount. belittle it. I love <laughs> it. It's the most amazing thing. No, not believe. First of all, she made you a um, mitzvah shliach, a shliach for a mitzvah. Yes. Made you a big thing, and it's not. It's amazing that it, they were doing it. Who, who, who in who in in, in America is going missions to, to Gaza? And who's we're we're amazing. We're, it's an amazing thing what that's happening. It's an incredible thing because I think that at the end of the day, and maybe this is along the lines of what you just said, not everybody can do what you're doing or what you do or what I do, but everybody has the responsibility to do something. Right, and that's. The bottom. By the way, not line. just the Jewish community. For us, 100%. it is very clear. We are fighting for humanity on the front lines of humanity. You said no sound bites, but here's one that I've will. You give it out. No, yeah. No, we need friends and allies because this was an attack. This was an attack 100%. on the world. This was an attack on humanity. How many people from how many I, countries were kidnapped into I Gaza? Think as a, about uh, over forty countries were either murdered, injured, or abducted, and. You know, I, I know that as betrayed as people felt on October 7th, looking around, especially in left liberal circles, seeing how people were either, in best case scenario, being silent about the atrocities or excusing them, condoning them, or even glorifying them. A lot of 
Jewish communities and especially students are feeling completely isolated and alone and they don't feel that they have the alliances to reach out to other groups. And it's because I only understood this talking to the students just now. The basic dynamics of peer pressure when you have so many Muslim and Arab students who are saying, we're not talking to the Israelis, right. we're not talking to the Jews. If you're any of the other minorities, even if you don't, if you haven't drunk the Hamas Kool-Aid just yet, you're like, well, do I want to be with the popular kids or do I want to be with the nerds who are getting picked on? And that's why it's so important, you know, with what I was saying to the students as well, being a Zionist has always been about standing up to the bullies and people will only respect you yeah, at I all. When you stand up to the bullies and demand self-respect. I, I don't usually, you know this, I don't usually refer to Hamas as Hamas. I just say barbarians, the barbarians. It, yeah. it just, it, it defines what it is. Because people like, it's just like the word uh, Zionist and the word anti-Semite. I use uh, Brooke... Um, Jew hater. Jew, ha ha Jew, Jew Jewish hatred. hatred. Yeah. No, a Jewish Jew hatred is not. not um, no, because it sounds like the Jews do, are doing the hating. How do, Jew how hate. Does, how does Jew she, hate. How does, she, how does she say it? Jew hate. Jewish hatred. Jewish no, hate. that's no. not good. Jew hate. Jew hate or Jew hatred. Jewish hatred yeah, sounds like it's the Brooke, Jews who are doing the hatred. We had her on the which podcast. we don't. We're the ones doing the, the loving. Thing with it today. Um, it, 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 and, 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 and Hamas, I call them barbarians. It's just so, so you understand what you're dealing with. It's bar, bar, barbarians. What? Jew hatred. Jew hatred. Jew hatred. Jew yeah. hatred. And Jew, and and Jew, Jew, Jew hatred. hatred. Which I right. wonder whether that's a more effective um, phrase than, than anti-Semitism, which I 100 sometimes goes is. over people's head and you have the people saying, I can't be a, uh, you know, Arab saying, I can't be an anti-Semite because I'm a Semite. And it's like saying, right. I can't be homophobic because I'm homo sapiens, right? I mean, <laughs> right. Like, it's, this is not so, what the so, means. So, so then you agree that that's a better way to say it? I think so. Yeah, okay. So, we're, but yeah, we're in agreement on that. Yeah, I mean, I've seen comedians try to do jokes with Semite and that could be Arab too and it could be a whole thing. It's too complicated and Zionist, no one knows what the hell that means. Um, but, um, okay, I have a request for you. Okay. I have a cousin in Ramat Sharon, mm -hmm. and she is a uh, Mira Cohen Meitar, and she's been dying to get you. She understands that your work is to explain Israel's situation to the world, mm -hmm. but she, as a mother of three, has no idea how to explain to her own children what's happening in Israel. <laughs> And she's, she wants you to come speak to the kids and try to explain to them with your charisma, with your charm, with your uh, uh, uniqueness, your talent to explain to the kids of Israel what's happening. You know, that's parents. actually an idea for a post-war plan. A book, has Barafa Children, ABC. Of, uh, <laughs> has Barafa <laughs> Children. She yeah. absolutely said to me, I've been trying to reach him and his people, and uh, and they don't know how to explain to, to their kids what, what's I think happening. It's a in huge Israel. challenge for parents to try to shield their children from what is happening because you cannot live with that constant hysteria and trauma all the time. But you can't shield the no. kids. No, in, in, from a certain age, they're hearing, they're hearing, oh, and you can't. I think in Israel, things. whenever people are sitting together, they're always talking about who they know is here and who they know is there and who's captive and who's because at it's war. such a small country. Yeah, right, you're not he, you're not six he, degrees of separation. You're two he, degrees from six different angles. Yes, but even here, like I'm, I have a child, like a young child, and. My community is Israeli and Jewish, and everybody has somebody. Like we, the kids are nine and ten years old. We just had them write letters to one of the released hostages. Wow! Because we, you know, I know somebody who was going and is close with somebody who was That's just such released. A beautiful gesture. It was really amazing. But they're they wrote. Yeah, it was beautiful. They wrote her letters. Um, Stella. Moran, Stella, and I, and Michael Rappaport actually just interviewed her, interviewed her. It was really sweet. But they know, you know, they're writing her like, we're so happy that you're safe back in Israel now. But it is, it's an, in, it's impossible to shield them. And they hear and they, um, but that is a good book. Hasbara for kids. Hasbara <laughs> for kids. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a, it, you know, you, you have to tell the kids that this is the future of Israel. Tell them what, what happened on October 7th, what happened with the government, what happened that led to this, you know? A hundred percent. They're going to grow up with this the way that, you know, we grew up with the stories of the Holocaust. Right. That That's... Yeah. It definitely feels like a, you know, while the scale is obviously completely different and incomparable to the Holocaust, 
that sort of once in a century yeah. watershed moment that redefines people's lives and the trajectory of their lives. And I see that, by the way, here in New York as well, with the number of people who didn't feel connected to the community or to Israel. But then October 7th was a punch in the face, a punch in the gut. They looked around, they felt betrayed by friends and allies, and they felt it so emotionally that it just reminded them viscerally who their people were, who their friends were, who their uh, real allies are, and and, and changes people's, but the, makes them look at the world differently and just, just realize the world is not the place they thought But they it also was saw the definition of the never again. That never again is now. The never again. I don't, I don't know what never that means. I don't, I don't know. I hear the never again to me. Ne I think never again to everybody means something else. People used to think never again would mean never would there be a Holocaust again. And I have spoken about this. Whenever you speak to a Holocaust survivor, and I do, I have them in my life and on a daily basis almost, they never thought there was never going to be ne never again. They knew it would be, it would happen something like that again. The never again is, as I always say, if you come after the Jews, there's going to be repercussions. Yep. You um, lose your land. You've lost your land. You've lost this land. Nobody now. gets to burn Jews alive and no get away more. with it anymore. This is not 1935 anymore. You attack a Jew, be ready for the repercussions. You 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 say uh, as a president of a college campus that it's okay to say genocide for Jews is okay. You lose your job. Oh, they didn't say it was okay. They said it no, depended no, on the context. No, to be no, fair, let's let's no, quote no. them fairly. Uh, it's on the content. <laughs> Kishin took us all three of those ugly women. They can all kiss and touch us, each and every single one of them. Ugly, uh, ugly on the inside. I, my pa I can say whatever I want. You can say whatever my you want. <laughs> ugly on the inside, ugly on the outside. All three of them in all colors and all creeds and all religion. One of them even Jewish. Just ugly, ugly, ugly. That's all that was. And they, they, they hopped it. They had their jobs, they're teaching, but they lost their jobs as president. And one of them really had a big fall from grace. You, you, you. That, that's 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 the never again. That's what I'm saying. That's the never again. Listen, I hope you're right. I don't know. I see there it was some. I see so much stuff on social media, like what just happened in Berkeley. My what happened in Berkeley? There was a Jewish student that was assaulted yesterday. Mm. That um, they had like some meeting and somebody physically assaulted her. This is what globalized so, the intifada. Means. Yeah, this, so, this is it. My violence. niece, who I talk about all the time, who's a student at Harvard and is Israeli. I mean, the stories that she tells me are insane. Yeah. I don't know. Like Paris or France is trying to pass a law that the law that you can't put the Israeli flags up at like Eurovision or something. I mean, this is how the Holocaust begins, right? Yeah. Like it doesn't just start with but the Holocaust, but but there is a state of Israel now. There's also there's there's some kind of uh, it's, it's it's a different situation than World War Two. And that's I had dinner with I had dinner with with uh, first year students. I was at a dinner with a whole bunch of first year students of medical school, mm -hmm. and they were telling us how right after October seventh, all the students it like it veered off like right. the, the ones that are. Pro Hamas, pro barbarians, pro pro Palestine, whatever that 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 you want to call that, they no longer are associating with the Jewish kids. The ones that are so showed support for the Jewish kids, they're not associating with them. It's little things like that, but you know they're not throwing them out of medical school. I'm just saying, I I don't know if you know this phenomenon living in Israel, but Americans are arming themselves. I don't know if you know this. This is insane. I've heard. I've heard stories, anecdotes. They have gotten their permits. They've gotten their licenses. They've gotten their training, and they are buying arsenals. I mean, the Hermes of shotguns, the Gucci's of of all the Lots. gear. I mean, that's disturbing and terrifying because American Jews should feel that they can continue to live in safety and security in I, what is still the greatest country in the world. Correct. I, I, I'm not a gun man. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a fan. I'm not the NRA or any of that stuff, but I, I get it. You're living in a Jewish neighborhood where almost every house is Jewish and there's no gates and guards in the front of the house and um, you have a family and some of the crazy uh, crazy uh, Muslims have a holiday, kill a Jew day, right? 
There's a holiday yeah, kill a Jew, they know? Not what? that I'm familiar with. No, no, he's so scared of any of this going. No, there was, there's some holiday where like, you... I have not worked this hard no, he's the, this Yeah, guy. he's like, yeah, this could be the worst... <laughs> please don't, don't, don't this. I don't think this that's This could be real. the worst there career move of my life. I don't think that's a real festival. There was an international yes. jihad day. There was a, ah, yes. There yeah, was so a global day. So global coming, day of I don't rage. make things yeah, up, yeah. believe me. I'm not... I'm not... So a global day. I'm not so imagine sure on, on global jihad day, as, as opposed to the global days of meditation. Uh, yeah. On a, yes, on a global jihad day, they go into a Jewish neighborhood where they know every house is Jewish. There's a mezuzah everywhere. They kick a door down and let's jihad this house. The owner of the house wants to have a shotgun oh, to, to put them to an end. When you see protests taking place outside cancer hospitals, and you yes. see the chanting becoming increasingly vicious and calling for overt violence, and these cases of violence as well. You can't fault people for feeling unsafe. And see? I think the, you know, I, I don't know whether arming themselves is the right choice, but the awakening that we are seeing in the diaspora of people saying, whoa, maybe there is a danger to Jewish life that we weren't aware of before and we need to organize and rethink our priorities 100%. and build those alliances, which is absolutely critical, not just be within ourselves, build alliances and insist on our place and our right to live in this society in freedom and security is absolutely critical. That's it. Archie Bunker, don't he talk good? <laughs> don't he talk good? That's an old show. Before he, my time. It was before your time. It was an amazing show. And he used to go, don't he talk good? He, he had a Jewish lawyer. Archie Bunk had a Jewish lawyer. Rabinowitz, Rabinowitz, and Rabinowitz. Wow. Yeah, it was, really? it was so funny. And Archie would sit there and goes, don't he talk good? <laughs> and so that's literally that. Um, he was brilliant. That show would never get on Never, the air never. Today. So let me just, you, 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 you of you, I know, off of, how do you drink your coffee? Uh, extra strong. Yeah, uh, I uh, you need, you since need caffeine. I think I, if there are fewer than three shots, I actually cannot taste the coffee, let alone feel the caffeine. Yeah, that's uh, that's an energy. That's like a, and, that's like uh, a Celsius uh, energy. Yeah, definitely having an unhealthy amount of uh, coffee, but uh, I like a, like a small, strong cappuccino. Yeah. Funny thing, coming to America, you ask for a small coffee, and they bring you something oh. in like a popcorn bucket. And yeah, you say, I said I wanted a small one. Oh, no, I see. Can't. Everything I here see is on a different the other scale. way. When you go outside of America and you ask for a large coffee, and they give you this. Thimble of 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 co I'm like, where's the how much can you drink? No, no, no. Oh, the coffee wow. in America is disgusting. <laughs> I only drink espresso. And okay, so but no, no, no. I, this the, maybe the, is the best back, reason back to, to make Aliyah. We have back, back, great you, coffee. You live in Tel Aviv. You I live in Tel Aviv. Aviv. Yes. Live, live alone. You ma I, marry I dating. I'm alone. I'm I'm single. You're single. <laughs> wow. You would blow up on J Date. <laughs> you would be the bomb on J Date. He fits everything. By the way, he looks. He looks Jewish. He could also pass as what does like it mean to look Jewish? Italian. Oi. No, you got the dark, this, the eyes. You when you speak, your eyebrows talk a lot for you. Where are you your could, parents? You from? could easily pass as gay in London. No, he could easily pass as gay. No, <laughs> he's attractive, put together. Well, yes. the, the beard is better than mine. The beard is more is it perfect, better than mine. You're yeah, you're um the oh, only guy in Israel who wears a suit. Uh, yes, and one that fits. <laughs> Because even and news one anchors, even news anchors, you see them wearing suits. Horrible. It's only from the waist up. It's jeans below, and it's yeah. and they make the knot not well, and it's, no. it's a hot mess. Yeah, it's in, no. You have a body for a suit too. You can't <laughs> carry the gut out. And I'm doing I'm doing my best to try to sit up and, and yeah. Do right you work out? Do you exercise? You gotta find wow, time to you exercise. Know, I got managed to get myself into such a good routine before this war started, and then and October then seventh happened, and it's like okay, well, do you want to go to the gym or do you want to do a CNN interview? Okay, well, what's going to save the Jewish people? So no, so I go on CNN. Were you always um, this way, or did Something. What do you mean by this way? I mean, like, I feel like I became extremely passionate about being a Zionist after October 7th. Hey, look, I made Aliyah. I, I grew up in the UK and then at the age of 23, after I finished uh, university at the, the two community colleges you mentioned, I got on a plane, flew to Israel because I wanted to serve in the army. So it's always been in my kishkas and I uh, hadn't quite found the right role in which to make an impact, and then October 7th happened in, in the most horrific, tragic circumstances. I find myself now on the front lines fighting fighting this war on the media front. Yeah. Okay, back to this, This everybody can see on all of your interviews. So where, where do you get your suits from? 
Uh, where do I get my suits from? Yeah. Because uh, you're an easy guy to buy suits for. Well, thankfully, I had a weekend before this uh, trip yeah. started to do a little bit of shopping in New York. You did? Okay. Yes. And where did you get your suit from? I went to Macy's. Macy's? Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Those of you listening, reach out to him. Those of you who always send me, th- he will do suits for you, custom-made suits. Send him suits. <laughs> Arthur would take him. Yes. Arthur would take him and get him the nicest suits yes. in the world. In the yes. world. Dior? Oh Who's the friend who works at Dior? Or isn't Dior, that- whatever, doesn't matter. But we, nah, you got to kill the suit game. You got to <laughs> kill it. You- Problem is, you know, this war started in the beginning of October when just the weather started to drip off. I'm worried what happens if this war continues and we start going into the, the summer, summer because it's going to be impossible to wear a suit. I'm going to have to start giving interviews in, in shorts and a tank no, you top. You have to because- make sure the looks, are, the looks are important. Make sure someone on your team is gay. Make, some, make sure <laughs> someone has, it's not a joke. No, no, you make need someone has an eye that, that your looks are right, the cameras, the light is right. And the, for a start, we'll work on so it. You know, important. so many people want to volunteer and so come important and help with the operation. So if anyone wants to come and volunteer and be like responsible for like volunteer Style. stylists, then, yeah. then volunteer you know, style. That, that's also a way to contribute to the Jewish. We can vet them for you. Can, no, <laughs> Leo, Leo can vet them for you. Leo's good at, Leo's good at okay. that stuff. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, what what else is about uh so the extra i i i i'm just it's it's a, a breath of fresh air is what i want this to be called this episode should be called okay. a breath of fresh air that's really what you are it's a shame that a war brought you to the to the spotlight yeah, yeah. it's a shame that a war brought you to the spotlight i think you're uh you're doing an unbelievable job thank you what's your message to anybody listening to this i don't want to drag this this to this out you probably have 17 more things going on today that we need everyone to take action that you know Hasbara fighting for the state of Israel. When he says Hasbara, it means it's not Hasbara. It's Hasbara. It's oh, that's explanation. a good one. That's a good one. Expl- Hasbara. Hasbara. I, that's so why I, I don't, don't say Hasbara. I don't say Hamas. Yeah. Barbarians. It's easier to define what they are rather than the name they gave themselves. Listen, the bottom line. The bottom line. This isn't a war that we started. It's not a war we wanted. It's not a war we expected. But it's a war we've got to win. Right. It's a war that Hamas declared on us. It's now holding 134 hostages and threatening to do this over and over again. We have to win this war because otherwise it will happen again and it will be worse. So if you are out there on the streets chanting, cease fire now, cease fire now, either you're a complete scumbag because you want to abandon the hostages in the terror tunnels where they are being starved and tortured and raped and enslaved, or you think there's some sort of magic solution that's going to get the hostages back, but you want to leave Hamas free and on its feet to do this again and again. And you know what? If Hamas emerges free and emboldened and attacks us again, it will be on you because it will have learned that it has support from people like you that will restrain Israel and tell itself your Jewish heroes don't have a right to defend themselves. You get to burn Jews and get away with it. And we're not going to let that happen. Right. In five years from now, where, where are you sitting? In hopefully, five years from now, in, where are you sitting? In five years five years from now, hopefully we'll have wrapped up the war and I'll be able Azov, to take Azov, a vacation. Live the war. I'm, I don't mean, okay, the war is with, the war. Uh, uh, on a, you. On a sun lounger, and, on a sun lounger Nashum, taking a well-deserved vacation. You'll never be on a sun vacation. lounger anywhere. You don't have that in you. Oh, no, you, I definitely need a vacation. You are going to be where? In in the parliament? One of those people no, s- no, screaming? No, 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 no. I don't see that. No prime minister of Israel? No, no, point. no, no, no. God, no. You say no, that now. No, for no. sure, for sure. I can't <laughs> wait. I'm so happy we're doing this interview. So when he's running for prime minister, we have... Then, no, no, no. Me, me <laughs> so prime minister. So therefore, it's a clip that's never going minister, to run again. Because it's never, not going to happen. I no, could no. never be prime Odia, minister. Odia, you're trying to get me in trouble. It's never I'm going to happen. I'm not getting you in trouble, Motika. I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> I, I, I'm, you, I'm telling you, I'm representing the Jewish humor. You're representing statesmanship. I don't know. I think I'm trying to inject a good dose of humor myself. You... What's your favorite joke? Oh no, you can't put me on the spot. No, so then what? Oh, okay. It's not like I have a favorite joke to pull out, but you I think you know, humor, is a, humor is a coping mechanism. He definitely has one. <laughs> he definitely What's has What's your favorite joke? You're the comedian here. Two gay guys are playing hide and go seek. One says to the other, I'm going to hide. If you find me, I'll give you a blowjob. The other guy says, what if I don't find you? Says, I'll be behind the piano. <laughs> there you go. He is so scared that this is coming out. Like, <laughs> everything I've built up to in my career, he's used to all the Brooke, what's her name? That's okay. We, 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 and we, we stand agree. with us. And we Israel agreed that we get to edit the episode and go over it before the raw material goes no, out, We're right? going to cut this up nice. Motek, this is, you are, anybody listening to this, our fans love you and love Israel and our, and 
call to action, go on the mission, go fly those yeah, F-16s, come. go hand the soldiers money, go do what you can. Exactly. Come barbecue but, for soldiers, come pick avocados and mangoes and yeah. bear witness, hug the hostage families. Yes. And when you go back, put the hostage posters back up. I know it's tough. It's been 104. Like it's difficult to count how many days. If the anti mites tear down a poster, put up two. If they tear down two, put up four. Burn down the whole rainforest for all the paper you need. I don't care. We need yep. to get the hostages out and That's keep, right. Every time keep I putting see up a, those posters. a hostage poster written down, I walk around with these Am Yisrael Chai stickers Amazing. and I put a sticker Brilliant. up every oh, time had, I see a poster. We, we had for our, uh, we, had, we, had, we had our 100th podcast and they, you know, the question that Kebri kept saying, who would we be the one? We did it live. We did it live. We did it mm. live in front of the 92nd Street Y. And uh, they asked, who's your number one guest you'd want on the show besides you? Uh, it would have <laughs> That's been, it. Your podcast has peaked. Now. It, it, uh, it, uh, I want uh, you on my podcast, though. Omer Shem Tov. Omer. Omer Sh- ah. I don't know. For some reason, his picture is everywhere I go. It, it, everywhere I go, I see his your picture. lips to God's ears. And that then, that poor kid gets out as soon that, as possible. And then the poster that was by our house was was taken down. And I thought, okay, I'm not going to see this face anymore. And then I was invited to a uh, the candle lighting in the mayor's house, and his family was there. Yeah, and it was I was like, wow, this. I met I, just, uh, I met his cousin yesterday, Omar Shemtov, by the way, one of the Gen Zionist heroes, because he was at the Nova party and had a chance to escape, and he went back to try to save total strangers he met an hour earlier, five o'clock in the morning, dancing at that trance party, and then got abducted into uh, Gaza. And it's really tragic how these people, like you mentioned, this name, which obviously is supposed to mean something to someone, because these hostages have become household names in the most horrific circumstances that people throw their names out and it's as if they're celebrities or reality yes that everyone knows who they are because their faces are everywhere yep. at least in israel and i'm proud to live in the only country where no one tears down hostage posters yeah right. i want to tell you I, I just on a side note this weekend um a friend of mine ca- called me up and he, he had a table at house of yes house of yes is a a place where you have like a nova festival every weekend there were amazing DJs that were there. He said, Mori, I know you haven't been out in a while. Come, you're in town. And we were out there and we, I was in. We were in it. We were doing, we were in a very good place. We were dancing. We had our friends together with us. And we were just like, the music was amazing. We were just, and then like, it hits you. Could you imagine being in this state and all of a sudden terrorists flying in and being shot at? And you're in like a zone where you're a very, you know, yeah, they were in the zone. They were. We, yeah, we were, were having the time of their and lives. Thinking about that, peace and festival. I mean, that's what it was. And, yeah, but but you know, everybody's in their in their zone. Yeah, and it, all of a sudden, it, was, it just hits me. I'm like, oh my god, this is what they were experiencing right before this, this this it happened. Where is the best place to well, give me a website, a Instagram account, somewhere where you think is the best place for people to help? What's one of your favorites? First of all, they should be helping the hostage families. They need help. We have to keep reminding the whole world about the hostages. It's amazing how the so hostage families- bring them home, what, what's yeah, the- Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the families forum of the hostages, the way that civil society came together and they are fighting to bring back their children and their parents is truly inspirational. Um, they could definitely use a lot of help to continue raising awareness. I know it is exhausting when people tear down posters to put them back up, uh, but we have to do it. And you have to call up your elected representatives and pressure the Red Cross and pressure Qatar because we have to get these people out. This is, it's a humanitarian issue. These are people who are snatched from their beds, from music festivals, a third of them with chronic conditions. If they weren't in you know, health danger when they were abducted, they're in serious yeah. danger now after being starved and uh, for so long. Matis Yahu just said, he's like, if a kid gets kidnapped in America, it's bad. Like it's a problem. Everybody goes and yeah. tries to get the kidnapper and rescue the kid. Right. But if you think that you can re- you can kidnap Jews and nobody's going to do anything about it, like it's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Um. We can't go through one podcast I know, with I her ju- not cursing. The, it's every every time that we there's go through There's a diner this. in Huntington, Long Island yeah. called the Golden Globe Diner, which is owned by Peter, who is not Jewish. He's Greek. And his entire front of the diner is papered in the pictures of the hostages. That's amazing. And we had a That's show amazing. in Huntington around the corner, two sold out shows, Periel was on, and uh, we brought him, we gave him a yarmulke from the stage. We- I've been singing Hatikva at the end of every show. Amazing. Everywhere. I'm gonna be singing Hatikva at the Kennedy Center. I'm going to, uh, I'm going How's to- How's your singing voice? 
Amazing. He's okay. a cancer. He's a, uh, he so is. Killing it. So you do it with all the tamim and the. Hatikva? Yeah. You do it like cantorial style or? No, I do it just so. I, st- I, I, I found a, a, a soundtrack where everybody can sing along. It's like in a nice lower okay. range. So I want everybody to, even if they don't know the words, they go, you know, you wanted them. Um, and so that's just, you know, after you, you it's funny because I'm, I'm doing a show, an hour and a half, people are cracking up and laughing, Mashiach energy. And then you got to remind them, don't forget what's happening in Israel. So please yeah. rise and let's do Hatikva. And that's, um, and for some reason, I just, I, I'm, I'm on tour. I'm going to, uh, about to go to Boston, to San Diego, LA, Denver, um, Kennedy Center, uh, all over Pittsburgh, uh, um, Pennsylvania. And, you know, it's just, I feel like that's where I'm, my calling is. I, for some reason, I don't feel like I need to go to Israel right now. I need to go to the Jews of America mm-hmm. and help them unite through laughter uh, and and do that. And um, That's so important, raising morale, but laughter in a way, not that lets people escape from what is happening. A little bit of escapism is fine, but you bring them back down to earth and remind them they have a mission, they have a job. This is a moment for the Jewish world to come together yeah. and act for a very specific mission that has just never been clearer to us. Then, then really you're doing, uh, you're talking about Mashiach energy, then God's work. That's Mashiach energy. Um, that's it. Um, Elon anything? has a podcast. Of course. No, yes. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm new, I'm getting to the... This was the, the deal. I okay come on your podcast in order to plug my podcast. Are we okay with, with, uh, with <laughs> Whites and Luxembourg and A&H? We're good? Yeah, we're good. I okay. Mean, we love our sponsors and they help make you be here. And... Um, Talk to the people. How do they reach you? How do they watch you? What's your... Wow. First of all, follow me on Instagram and uh, Twitter. Uh, Which is... At Elon A. Levy. We've launched spelled, a podcast. Spell E-Y-L-O-N-A-L-E-V-Y. We've launched a podcast as well, State of a Nation. Amazing. Uh, we've built a whole studio in Tel Aviv. The idea is I'm a spokesman. How do I know what to say when I go on TV? It's because I'm having long, in-depth conversations with journalists and policymakers and activists and learn from them. So I'm inviting people to be a fly on the wall as I talk to the people who know what they're talking about so that I can know what to say. Uh, And uh, it's available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you get your podcast. I say that at the end of every episode, wherever else you get your podcast. I don't know where else people get their podcast, but it's the thing you say at the end. If of I had to podcast. find this podcast, they, they, I, I wouldn't know. No, Leo runs it. Are you crazy? I wouldn't know where to find my podcast. I have no so idea. YouTube, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. <laughs> Oh, and that's it. You are, uh, I, I can't thank you enough for, for reaching out to us and coming. Doing thank this. you. This I'm is so, a big honor. Yeah. Uh, me. Like my first Gallon. media appearance in New York as well. Is it really? Yes. Oh, Amen, amen. You, uh, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, do, now? No, hold on. I, I brought him, um, it's so funny. Nobody can hear you. Oh, no, I want you, uh, I, Ayamaka. Merch. I was going to bring you a hat. <laughs> oh, thank you. Mashiach energy. Mashiach. So you want to make the bracha again? What bracha? You said Shechianu. Thank you so much Amen. for this being your first uh, your first interview in in New York and Thank you um, for this. my pleasure and it, it really you are, you're, you're, you are creating Mashiach energy representing the Jews the way you do. Um, I am on tour. Uh, so Boston, the Wilbur, two sold out shows, the 29th and 28th. Not sold out, there's a few seats left on the 29th. Um, San Diego, the matinee has a few seats, two shows on the 3rd of March. Then we are in the improv at in LA. Those shows are sold out, um, but some releases might be happening, so just keep your eye on that. Then we are in St. Louis. If you know anyone in St. Louis, let them know I'm going to be there. Be the friend that brings the friend to the comedy show. Not only get tickets for your friends, let them know I'm going to be there and a whole bunch of other shows. Um, ModiLive.com. Uh, say hi. Let us know what you thought of this interview. Uh, Periel. I'm at Periel Ashenbrand and you can find all of my comedy shows and you can also DM me if you want to help with rebuilding the Kibbutzim in Israel. You can shoot me a message on Instagram for that project. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Pariel. Thank you.